East Tennessee. What a beautiful place. Wherever direction you look, for as far as the eye could see, this was Cherokee land. And they took it from a lot of other tribes as they expanded their nation. And they respected the land and they worshiped it. All their land all these mountains and valleys and rivers. And they named the Great Smoky Mountains a place of smoke. Here's the Cherokee name for it. Now here's the Cherokee Nation at its peak. Probably just before the white man came in here, probably just before the 1700s. All their land. They had had tribal wars with other Indians to get this much land, especially the Chalene to the north in Kentucky. Now the first white man that they ever laid eyes on was in 1540. And that was Hernando de Soto. He's a conquistador from Spain. And he was here just to explore the land and the territory so he could conquest it, look for treasure, gold. And he traveled here. He didn't treat the Indians very nicely. They didn't really like him. And here's the route he took. He traveled as far north up to Tennessee, all the way up the French Broad River, and then travel the riverway down to the Tennessee River, and on out this route. All the time looking for gold and trying to conquest, conquer, while he was exploring so he could claim new land for Spain. But it didn't work out too good for him. Now these Indians, they wouldn't see another white man for 200 years. So they just continued hunting and everything. And they developed their own language, their own alphabet and everything before white man really come in here. And probably around the 1770s, 60s, I guess, they started seeing the long hunters come in. Some of them made friends. And white men started trying to settle the area. Here you, Henry Station here, was one of the first treaties they had with the Indians back during the Revolutionary War. And here is the Transylvania Purchase of 1775 at Watauga Shoals. Now with just a few wagons of dry goods and 2,000 pounds of sterling, he was able to buy 20 million acres from the Cherokee in this purchase he made, the Transylvania Purchase. Most of it's in Kentucky. And a lot of history went on there. Dark and bloody ground, they call it. The first people they made really treaties with when the Revolutionary War was gone, they, they sided with the British. Well, that was just fine, Indian chief like Dragon Canoe. He had a hatred for the white settlers for encroachment on their lands. He was more than glad to get rid of them. So he was more than happy to fight them. And here they would ambush them any way they could, burn them out, massacre them. And it was kill or be killed, That's the way the frontier was. And it was, it was bad on both sides. Can't blame one side or the other. One was just as bad as the other. But no matter how hard they burned and how hard much they killed, they couldn't stop the white wave of settlers coming in this country. 
so they tried to get some more trees going and settle for peace. Some still wanted to fight. But the common old Cherokee Indian, just like everybody else, just trying to make a living, trying to raise their family, trying to survive. A lot of them integrated with the settlers and vice versa the settlers with the Indians and raised families. And they lived hard like everybody else in this pioneer country. Now here, by the time 1830 come around, you could see what their empire, their nation, had dwindled down to. A small fraction of what it was from all these treaties. And there's still Indian fighting going on. The Creek Indian War was going on just before that. And they still had an Indian problem. Now Andrew Jackson, when he became president, he was gonna solve this Indian problem. So there was a bill brought up in the house for the Indian Removal Act to relocate the Indians. And it barely went through Congress and Senate and here the acting Cherokee chief of the time was John Ross. He fought it everywhere he could, and even after it passed, he would never sign it. But it made no difference. They started rounding up all the Cherokee Indians and stuff, made stockades to put them in until they could travel them and send them to uh, the new territory of Oklahoma, the Indian Territories. Now they wasn't the only ones that was relocated. Here's a list of all the Indians that was to be located. There was a total of probably a hundred thousand Native Americans to be relocated. The Choctaw, the Chicksaw, Creek Indians, the Seminoles, and a few other groups. And they was all to be relocated to the Oklahoma Territory. Now here's the routes they took when they started uh, relocating everybody. The northern route, and the water route, and it was a hard trip. Many of people never completed this trip. Hard time of winter. Day by day. You could imagine the hardship they had. Seeing your family member can't go on, collapse, and die. Just, just so sad. So sad. Estimated of about 16,000 Cherokee made this trip. 4,000 didn't make it. Most were just buried where they fell, along the road, in unmarked graves. But the ones that survived it made it to the new land, here in the Cherokee Nation of the Oklahoma Territory. And they struggled, but they built it back. Now here, in the eastern band of the Cherokees, their story still lives on. There was about three or four hundred of them escaped to the mountains and stayed there and hid. And 
they're there to this day. They were great and proud, proud people. They've got a nice museum here of all their history. Their heritage. This is all their land, their home. I thank you for watching.